Let's look at exponential functions for the SAT math section. Number one, which image shows exponential growth? So this is linear. It's a linear function. It's just a line. This is going to be a quadratic function. It's got a, the shape of a parabola. And an exponential function would be flat on one side and get really, really steep on the other side. So it's going to be B here. This shows exponential growth. Growth meaning that it, it increases as you go to the right. All right, and exponential decay would be a function that might look like this. It might start out steep going down, and it will flatten out as you go to the right. All right, number two. Find the y-intercept of y equals 3 times 2.2 to the power of x. Well, the y-intercept for any function will be where that function crosses the, the y-axis right there. And we know that x is always 0 where it crosses the y-axis. So all I have to do is put in 0 for x right here. 2.2 to the power of 0 is 1. So y equals 3 times 1. The y-intercept would be 3. So always remember that when you're looking for the y-intercept, you put in 0 for x. And some number to the power of 0 is always going to be 1. Number three, if a of t equals 300 times 1 plus 0.09 to the power of t represents the amount of money in dollars in an account after t years with an annual interest rate. A, what is the annual interest rate as a percentage? So what this is telling me is that it looks like I'm starting with $300 and that's being multiplied by 1 if I combine this 1.09 to the power of t. So after one year, it's 300 times 1.09. After two years, it's 300 times 1.09 times 1.09 because I'd be squaring 1.09. So every year, I'm multiplying by 1.09, which means that the annual interest rate would be 9% because I'm multiplying by 1.09. So if I just multiply by 1, I get the same as what I had originally. But this 0 0.09 is the extra amount that I get, and 0 0.09 is 9%. B, how much money to the nearest cent will be in the account after 5 years? So I can use a calculator on this one. Well, that means that they said that after t years, so t represents years, so I just plug in 5 for t. And let's use the calculator to see what we get. 300 times 1.09 to the power of 5, I get 461.5, and that would round up to 5.9. So that would be $461.59. Number four, the graph below could show which of the following equations. So here's the graph that we have. And here are the options here. So y equals negative 2 to the power of x, y equals 2 to the power of negative x, y equals negative 1 half in parentheses to the power of x, y equals negative 1 half in parentheses to the power of negative x. So it looks like it's going to be something like 2 to the x or 1 half to the x with a transformation, maybe flipped horizontally or vertically. Let's really quickly look at what y equals 2 to the x and y equals 1 half to the x would look like and then see what transformation we have here. If we have y equals 2 to the power of x, then that means that when we plug in 0 for x, I'm going to get my y-intercept first. If I plug in 0 for x, 2 to the 0 is 1. So I'd have the point 2, uh, sorry, that'd be 0 comma 1. And let me just make, make the scale be like this. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, etc. Like that. Negative 1, negative 2. So I'll make that each of these little tick marks worth 1. Okay, so we said if we plug in 0, we get an output of 1. That would be right here. If I plug in 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So I go over 1 and my height doubles. If I plug in 2, y equals 2 to the power of 2, that would be 4. So 2, 4, that's going to be 2, 3, 4, way up here. Every time I'm going to the right, I'm doubling, right? I'm going to multiply by 2 one more time. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so that's that's like way up, way up here. 
All right, so it's going like this. If I go to the left, two to the negative one, so if I plug in negative one, two to the power of negative one, that's the same as one over two to the power of one. So this is going into rules of exponents, which I'm not gonna go into detail in this video, but that's what I get, I get one half. So that's going to be down, down here. And then two to the negative two would equal one over two squared. That's the same as one fourth. So I'm halving as I go to the left. That makes sense because as I go to the right, it's gonna double. Okay, so it would flatten out on this side and get very, very close to zero. It would never hit the height of zero, but that's what y equals two to the x would look like. Now let's do y equals one half to the power of x in red. I'm gonna look for my y-intercept first. One half to the power of zero is one, so that goes through this point as well. One half to the power of one is just a half down here. One half to the power of two, well, one half squared is one fourth. So we're halving as we go to the right, and that's gonna be one eighth, one sixteenth, et cetera. If it goes, if it's one half as it goes to the right, one half of the height that I used to have, well, going to the left would be double. So this was, let's see, 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 4th, 1 half, 1. This is going to be 2, and then this would be 4 right here. And in fact, I can check. So let's, let's say that we plug in negative 2 for x. So y equals 1 half to the power of negative 2. That's the same as 1 divided by 1 half squared, which is 1 over 1 fourth, and 1 fourth would fit into 1 four times, so that's going to be 4. So this graph is actually, let me just draw it first, 1 half to the power of x is actually 2 to the x flipped across the y-axis. All right, and seeing these two graphs can help us figure out what would the answer be here. So it looks like this graph, the green one that we're looking for, is going to be one half to the power of x flipped upside down. So I'm looking for the opposite of one half to the power of x. And that is choice C right here. Y equals negative or, or the opposite of one half to the power of x. So there we go. So that's a few problems on exponential functions for the SAT math section.